In this tutorial, we'll show you how to set up your user components as well as a user-defined component. So here we have an empty uh, KimCAD file. Um, so if we go up to this little molecule, and we can specify what components we want to add to a simulation. Sometimes the search bar doesn't work as well as you uh, would hope, so I tend to use either a name or a formula to find exactly what I want. I know that some people were having trouble finding uh, specific elements. So actually, if we go down to zinc, we can find its different oxidative states as well. Um, so zinc 2 chloride, uh, as well as uh, zinc 2 plus, and its various compounds. Um, so that's how to just select components. We can also go to thermophysical and select select components. We get the same screen. But if we want to define our own component or modify one that's already in there based on experimental data, we can go to thermophysical, component database, create new component, and get this screen. So let's model something up very similar to um, ethanol. So if we say uh, ETOH surrogate. So this will be a pseudo component because we're putting in our own uh, variables uh, or parameters um, for the different variables. Uh, if we want it to be somewhat like uh, ethanol, boiling point roughly 170 F. We're going to save it to our temp stations library. So now we get this screen where we can view and edit our component data. Um, you can uh, select another component if you want to in place of that. Um, synonyms, uh, different formulas. <clears throat> so we can put you know, C2H5OH for ethanol, but we are defining something that has properties very similar to ethanol. So we can actually go and copy uh, those as well. But now we actually need to look at all of the data that, um, that we need to put in to increase our accuracy of our simulation. So basic data will automatically give you a temperature and pressure uh, critical based on the molecular weight. Um, we're just going to leave that alone for now because I just want to show you how to define things in terms of the equations that KimCat expects you to. So if we would click on uh, our vapor pressure and the heat of vaporization, you can see that there is an equation number that's needed. That equation number um, has these specific coefficients. But we need to know the form of the equation, so we click on help. You can see that for vapor pressure and heat of vaporization options, this recommended equation 101 has five coefficients. So we click on 101, and this expression here is how data is read. You can see that output, or y, is vapor pressure in pascals, and our temperature in is always going to be um, absolute temperature, so Kelvin. Now, if we have these coefficients, that's great. We just go ahead and put in those coefficients here. If it's in this form with temperature, measure log temperature, um, then uh, our, our last term. Now, if we don't, then we run into the problem uh, something similar to uh, Antoine equation, where log uh, of our saturation pressure is equal to A minus B over T plus C. The general form of the Antoine equation. So here we have the Antoine uh, equation constants for ethanol. Um, I pulled these off of the NIST webbook. Uh, so here we have absolute temperature, and here you can see that it is just the formula uh, right here in cell uh, E3. But just remember, we need it in pascals, and this gives it to us um, in uh, bar or log 10 bar. So if we convert it to bar, and then we convert that to pascals. Now we have our saturation pressure in pascals. But if you've ever tried to perform uh, regression in Excel, it can be a little complicated. Um, you can definitely do it with solvent. You can put in your um, constants or your placeholders for A, B, C, D, E. Uh, most likely you won't need this last term, so D and E will just be zero. Um, 
So we're actually going to use uh, polymath uh, to put it in the form we need, which is equation 101 for a vapor pressure, because we can't put in Antoine equation in CAMCAD. So here is our absolute temperature, our pressure in correct units. Always make sure it's in correct units when you transfer it in. So if we bring up polymath and click this one, regress and analyze data. So we have a, tab a table similar to Excel. So here, it's going to copy over our temperature. And our saturation pressure in the correct units, Pascal's. We're going to title these in temperature and PSAT. Now, if you have something like the Arrhenius equation or some other uh, linear form, we can use this linear and polynomial fit um, for our dependent and our uh, independent variables. However, we definitely do not have a linear function here. So we're going to go nonlinear and type in that expression. I'm going to leave off uh, D and E because it will not impact um, the solution a great deal and it, it will complicate things. So in our equation, our model, we have PSAT, which is y. Uh, that is equal to exponential of A plus B over temperature plus C times natural log of our temperature. Here we get our uh, models or our coefficients A, B, and C. It recognizes that PSAT and temperature are available variables because that is what we called our column one and our column two. So our initial guess is just it's a guess. So I'm just putting one for each of them. I click on this, and this says that our uh, program is ready for solution. We're good. And we want to we want to plot our solution that it uh, gives us, as well as our residuals, which will be the experimental minus the calculated, or our experimental column PSAT minus what it can give us. So we click the little pink arrow, let it run, and we can see that it did not do a good job. So this blue is the experimental data from our second column, and this, this green flat line is uh, what it has calculated. We can also see that our R squared is horrible, so our initial guesses are pretty bad. So we can go back. Um, and based on the way that this equation is used in some of the other uh, variables in ChemCAD, we can see that actually B is going to be negative, most likely. So if we do that and try it again, now we also end up with uh, the same uh, horrible fit. But if we increase each of these by magnitude and see if that changes things. And we can see that we have an R squared nearly equal to one. So here, our uh, experimental data and our calculated data lie nearly on top of one another. So that is certainly um, good enough for a simulation. So we can take these values for A, B, and C of equation 101 and go ahead and put those into um, our fit. Now we can refine it if we want to. See, B is closer to negative 1,000. So if we refine it a little bit, run it again, we get a little better R squared because the uh, value is a little bit better, but it will also change everything else. So there are multiple uh, solutions to make it fit. Um, you can see that this solution 21 was when we um, had negative 10. We changed it to negative 1,000. You can see that our points lie a little better uh, over one another. So we'll go ahead and keep uh, these values. So we'll go back to ChemCAD. We can 
add uh, these values. So A is 37.07567. B, negative 5245.16. C is equal to negative 1.811. Now we have to put in our equation number that we used, which again, we click on help. For vapor pressure, we fit it to equation 101. Now because we left D and E out, we can just leave those blank. But we have to specify that we used equation 101. Click OK. And now we're back here. And we can see that it saved that data in our vapor pressure. So that is the same thing for heat capacity. It uses an equation number. You can always click on the help, and it will tell you exactly which one. So for the ideal gas heat capacity, uh, it uses equation 107, which is a this form. If we uh, want to specify liquid heat capacity or solid heat capacity, they both use equation 100. A little more simple form, um, the one that we're kind of used to from heat transfer textbooks. But we can specify those coefficients here and it's pretty much the same for um, the liquid and uh, salt. Now, most importantly, you can add your own notes uh, here. So you can keep track of all the data that uh, your team or you have used over time. 